Hello to whoever finds this journal. My days in Maryland have been rewarding as they are troublesome and is often dangerous. I have spent the last six years assembling my notes in hopes the knowledge I have gained over the time spent in this world to bring good fortune to whoever finds this and to help them get a better understanding of the world they are about to enter. My intent is to create a compendium of how the world works, what it has to offer, and how you can survive and prosper. There are times I feel my work will only serve more confusion about what I found, but I also felt it necessary to compose my ideas and experience to illuminate a path to those who wish to explore. Contained within are recipes, survival tips, warnings, and more, all in an effort to promote safe travels and an overall awareness of the world you are entering. There will be times when you will be tested in ways this compendium can neither prepare you for or help you from. Your choices as a player and a guild may lead to swift and unprecedented consequences. I believe this to be the ultimate guide for survival and success. Welcome to Mortal Online 2. Welcome in guys to our first crafting video. In this section we will be talking about bow crafting. The whole reason I started this video series was to make this guide, but seeing all the positive feedback from you guys it's really encouraged me to do so much more with this project and attempt to make it much more than what I originally intended it to be. The recipes in this guide we'll be going over, or rather the ingredients that we'll be using, will be whitewood, dapplewood, horn, and crepite. The reason I selected these materials is simple, because they can be found in the starter area and if anybody watching is in the starter area watch until the end we will be going in depth of what materials are better or best and why I think they are I have made two other videos a wood cutting guide and an animal material guide for those that are not in the starter area that will go into hand with this video so you can come up with your own recipes and make your own trademark bow but before we get into any recipes or crafting, sorry to hold you up, you can skip to this part of the video if you want to see the builds and testing of the builds. We must first talk about skills that you need to be the best bow crafter in the game and what bows are good for what task or activity. You don't need all the bow crafting skills to build a good bow. If you want to make only short bows, great. If you want to make long bows or asim bows, then you will need the parent skills to unlock the next bow. If you want to make the best bows in the game, then you'll need some bonus skills. So let's get started with that. Now when we talk about skills and the points required to become a bowyer, it's a preference. So I'll tell you the max points you need to make standard bows or advanced bows. But you can also just craft short bows, or just use certain materials, or you can just craft simple bows. It's all up to you and what you want to offer in your business. It takes 700 skill points to make normal material bows. To make advanced bows in the mythical tappy wood bows, you'll need about 800 to 1000 points. 800 to work with advanced wood, 1000 to dabble into alchemy. Right, so starting from the top down of the skill window, you're going to want material lore, which is a secondary, and animal materials and botany, which is a primary. Everything else under this is a secondary, except advanced dendrology. I have two videos on my channel that explains where you can find the materials you want to work with. I have a woodcutting guide and a animal material guide. So go check those out if you want an idea of the materials that you wish to work with. Now, let me say, if you are like me and enjoy the hunt and want to be self-sufficient as a bow crafter, you will need zoology and the animal lore you will be butchering or working with. Like, I butcher spiders, so I eventually need 100 points into arthropoda. This leaves me with a max of 1,100 points on my build, leaving me with no room to do anything else. However, Tappy is not in the game yet, so I have some time to enjoy other skills and materials such as fishing. Moving on to the advanced skills, you will need advanced dendrology, which is a primary. Under crafting appliances, you will need alchemy contraptions and botany appliances, which is another 200 points. Now these are optional as they let you make better and better bows with more expensive material, but again, it's at your discretion, so pick these up if you want, or save the points for something else like butchery or whatever else you might find you want to do in the game. 
Moving on to Bowyer, this is a primary and must be at 100 to make good bows. D-curve and self-bow skills are secondary and they are optional to max at 100. Short bow crafting is a parent skill to long bow and long bows are a parent skill to ASIM. So if you want to make the best long bows, your short bows must also be at 100. And if you want to make the best asymmetrical bows, your long bows must be at 100. You don't have to make these bows or have them available to even craft, but if you want to max your store inventory, it's recommended. You'll need 300 points altogether to make all three types of bows, as each bow is a primer. Let's talk about the curves of the bow very quickly. D-curve bows are the first curve you will be making. This curve gives higher durability but less range. The higher durability means you can use the bow for much longer than a recurve. It is mostly used for farming and training when you plan to go on a long hunting trip and introducing a species to the endangered animal list for a short time. Recurve is the ideal skill you want to focus on. They give less durability, but much better range. They are the preferred curve for PvP. Again, I have no marksman skill, so I could not test the weak spot difference between the two curves. Moving on to composite bows, these bows are made with combining two materials, imagine that, and these combinations have raised many arguments in the local pubs and beyond within the bow crafting society, such as the age-old dense crepite and great horn debate of 2015. Personally, I liked great horn better than dense crepite, mostly because I charged more for them as the material was slightly harder to get, but people swear by dense crepite and so do I, mostly because it was popular demand and as any good shop owner, I supplied. But realistically, Realistically, the difference in MO1 wasn't very much, a few points of durability one way or the other and a few points of range one way or the other. They were pretty much the same type of bow, just came down to player preference. But when you unlock this skill, you will notice that the crafting menu has slightly changed and it added base materials and secondary material. Oh, and also a nice slider that will drive you insane trying to get down to a single specific percentage, so generally, as a recommendation, you want to add your wood to a base and your animal material as a secondary. The base is your primary material that will be the bow's handle. It mostly, but not totally, affects the durability of the bow, and the secondary material is the arms of the bow and it mostly but not totally affects the range of the bow. This is a real-life example, of course, and not an in-game visual example. In the game, your base is the frame of the bow and your secondary is the inner frame of the bow. And it really doesn't change color or anything to my knowledge, but it is a visual example to give you an idea. Talking a little bit more about the slider, adjusting the slider from 5% to 95% is the amount of base material you will use in your recipe. You can use 20% wood to 80% animal material or whatever suits your requested order. There is a link in the description to help you save on materials, but you must have 100 lore and you must have 100 skill before you can properly use it, but everything helps. The percentage of the slider, as you might have guessed, combined with the curve of the bow, affects everything about the bow, from durability, to range, to strength, and damage. Combine this with the materials and type of bow you are crafting, the slider will be totally different from any other bow that you make. So from the material, to the curve of the bow, to the shape of the bow, is going to be totally different and also the type of bow. So you can't use one set number across the board. The crafting system's pretty deep, but this is the easiest crafting system probably. So now that we got the skills out of the way, let's talk about the stats of the bow and how the stats affect the use of the bow. Durability, plain and simple, is how many times you can use your bow before it breaks. Higher durability means more use. That's why I recommend the T-curve bow to farm and train your combat skills with. The recurve bow is for your PvP and damage output. Range is how far you can shoot your bow, but also think of this as trajectory and velocity. If you have a high enough range, then you don't need to raise your shot over the target as much to compensate for the arrow drop. And the velocity, or how fast the arrow is traveling, affects the damage. Although upon testing, I want to say there is a sweet spot to your range to maximize your damage, but distance doesn't actually affect the damage. So range helps the damage of the bow, but it is not totally dependent on that. Moving on to strength, strength also plays a role in the damage of the bow and who can use the bow proficiently. A 105 strength bow will hit less than a 117 strength bow, 
but also will have a different range. So I hope you see how all of this connects into a triangle of durability, range, and strength. The system is hard to explain, but easy to understand by doing it. The range, strength, material, and curve of the bow all play a part in how effective the bow will be to operate. Bow crafting is one of the more simpler skills, crafting skills in the game. A quick crafter's note about strength, if somebody requests a bow from you, ask their max strength level and then take their strength level and minus one or two out of the bow you craft. If the bow exceeds or matches their max strength, they will take a massive stamina penalty. Now that you understand the stats of the bows, let's go over what your bows will be best at and what other builds are using them for. Starting with short bows, they are quick. Generally, you want these bows to be around 80 to 100 strength. They shoot quick, and depending on the curve and materials, they can be very durable or very fragile. The object of these bows is DPS and weak spot. Weak spot is a hit with a bow that ignores armor and does max damage, kind of like a parry with foot fighting. I want to note that due to my character's build, limitations I could not test arrows or weak spot probability. Short bows have the highest chance of weak spot out of all the bows and can be used on foot and horseback. Many people prefer these bows to take down mounts and ill-equipped adventurers out in the field the fastest way possible. With the marksman skill, this will increase your chance of weak spotting. This is also the preferred bow for dex fighters and tamers to pull aggressive animals away from their group and to get them into mercy mode while running around and moving around, saving on their stamina reserves. So to review, the short bow is good for low strength fighters, DPS, and weak spot. Botkin arrows are cheap and are used for training as they hit for less broadhead arrows are used for farming and PvPing, but do not use longbow arrows with short bows. Moving on to longbows, they have the most durability depending on the curve and materials used. They are a foot archer's best friend. They can be built for low strength adventurers as well, but what they excel at is range and damage. Longbows are for snipers and kingdom wall defenders, and as veterans mostly know them for, mount killing. In the great words of Wolfzite, they have been responsible for thousands of pets dying in MO1 by people standing outside of the town and sniping into it. It still happens to this day, unfortunately. They cannot be used on horseback. Longbows have no chance of weak spot and must be used only with longbow arrows. Tamers can also use these bows when taming aggressive mobs if you can find one within your strength range. They have 0% chance of weak spotting, but they also do the highest base damage. Finally, talking about asymmetrical bows, asymmetrical bows is the ideal bow to be used as a mounted archer. They are the longbow variant that can be used on a mount. They have around the same or more durability than a short bow, but less than a longbow. But unlike the longbow, they have a small chance of weak spot damage. This small chance can be increased with the marksman skill. I do not have the marksman skill, so I could not test this. But there is still a small chance of weak spotting without the skill. They have more range than a short bow, but slightly less than a long bow, and they can be built for just about every strength level. So if you're wanting to be a mounted archer, you must choose what works best for you, the asymmetrical build or the short bow. If you are a foot archer, longbow or shortbow would be best for you. Okay, so starting off to talk about testing, I've made four types of bows and the three categories. I've worked with white wood and crepite, white wood and horn, dapple wood and crepite, dapple wood and horn. Let's take a second and talk about these stats. The white wood and crepite has 46 durability, 47 max range. 51 strength. The white wooden horn has 49 durability, 39 range, and 45 strength requirement. I simply left the slider at 50%. The reason the horn has more durability than the crepite, I personally believe is because it's a more heavier uh, material, like how dapple wood is heavier than white wood that we discussed in our wood cutting video. Now, the wood has a lot to do also with the durability, where if we look at our dapple wood, it has a 60 durability compared to our white wood that has 46. So the wood 
also has a lot more to do with the durability than the uh, secondary materials the or the animal materials because the horn bow for the dapplewood is two point two and a half points higher than the crepite. It also has a lower range and a uh, lower strength requirement. So like wood, animal materials also have a specific use in the game. So uh, let's let's get to testing these bows and see how they do with damage. We're going to start with the white wood and crepite bow. We hit it for 31, and then the white wood and horn bow. We've hit for a 26. Now, to discuss these again, I believe the reason I believe the crepite is hitting harder than the horn is simply because of the range is higher, therefore, it has more trajectory and more velocity. So, let's uh, test the dapplewood and crepite. That hit for a 35, and the dapplewood and horn. And that hit for a 30, so if we go to our combat, we can see the four different types of bows starting from 31 to 30, and we started off with the whitewood and crepite and ended with the dapplewood and horn, so this 33 and the 35, there, or I'm sorry, this 31 and the 35, there's only about four points of difference in the 26 and the 30. Yeah, there's about a four point difference with these bows. Again, uh, I only left the sliders at 50 for the short bows, so they're not exactly the same strength, and that's going to affect it too. So, what I did leave around the same strength is the uh, ASIM bows. So, yeah, and I only have broadhead. So, yeah, we're. We're, we're not going to test the long bows. So starting off with a <clears throat> editor bravado here. What I was trying to get at in this section is the differences between each wood and each animal material and what they make. Even though there was four points of difference, the animal material was the same, but the wood is what made that four points of difference. White wood and horn uh, asymmetrical bow. Let's let's do this off the back of our horse for um, true testing. This is going, going to affect the damage a little bit because I don't have max mounted archery skills, but that it's going to be what it, it, it is what it is. So we hit 4A41 with the horn. Now this should be the uh, crepite bow, white wood and crepite. For this, we are going to hit for 44. So there's about a three point difference. And these are all, again, set at around the same strength. They may be like 0.3 off or 0.4 off, 0.7 off. I mean, so, I mean, you get, you got points of damage, right? It's not, or points of durability. It's not that crazy. So that was the Dapplewood and, uh, horn, this is going to be the Dapplewood and Crepite. As you see, there's a, uh, well, as you probably didn't see because I moved the mouse, so we'll talk about that in a second. There's one point of damage there that is a difference. So that just furthers, uh, that, that just further proves that different shapes of bows and different types of bows are going to be affected by the material much differently. But as you see, there's also um, almost four points of total durability between the two, and the max range is, goes up by about two points. And again, the strength requirements all the same. So hopefully that helps explain or helps uh, you to understand what the different types of materials can do to different types of bows and how the stats affect the bows and how the materials affect the bows. These are all set at a recurve rather than a decurve. So I'm sorry for the massive info dump on you guys. I 
crafting in this game is so crazy in depth. There's thousands of combinations that work. Generally, you want to stick with an animal material and a type of wood to get started and to learn the system. If you guys have any questions, leave it down in the comments or go to one of the links and ask around the community, ask other crafters in the game. Um, I've been crafting bows for a while and there's just so much that I want to cover everything that there is. It's just a lot and uh, yeah, <laughs> sorry that the video took so long to get out. Um, work has just been crazy. I know I'm pretty inconsistent and I'm hoping to fix that. I'm going to be starting streaming on YouTube. So if you guys want to like, comment, subscribe, all that, you could start catching me live. Uh, we play a lot of different games like Mortal and other MMOs and yeah, I don't know. Um, I appreciate everybody's support and hopefully the video helped. Again, if you have any questions, check the links or leave a comment. I am very active on comments and I'm mostly active in my Discord. And uh, thank you for watching.